Hey, man, you know who it is, man. You know what we at, too, man. Video mix is going down right here. What's going on right now? Respect My Grind live each and every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Videos, news, everything that you need is right here on this channel. Black-owned network. Yes, I say that proudly. Yes, I know Black History Month over, but I'm black every day of the week. You know what I'm saying? So I got to do it right, man. You already know what it is. First and foremost, man, respect to Florida Boy Entertainment, Vana 305, The Liddy Show, who've been holding me down a lot, man, especially after we did a good collab on my radio show, did a good collab on The Liddy Show. Um, what else? Had him on my show last week. Uh, we took over the Beehive down south, man. That was awesome. Gave away a lot of game, a lot of information. We talked about life, depression, alcoholism, Weight loss, man. Y'all seen the before and the after pictures, man. Y'all see that, you know, Lady Willie ain't playing no games. He got me motivated, man. I got to get in this gym and I got to drink more water and I got to stop eating all this sugar and I got to stop playing. I got to stop talking about it, man. I got to put in this work, man. Like, so shout out to Lady Willie, man, doing this thing, man. Definitely, man. Highly unique radio each and every Wednesday. Y'all know I'm on there. You know, that's a whole different discussion, man. That's a little more triple X, you know what I'm talking about? So that's for the grown and sexy, man. You got to be 21 to even tune in, man. Other than that, man, stay in the bed, man. Don't even tune into that show, man. Uh, Captain Magazine, the new issue is about to drop very shortly so salute to everybody in houston salute to everybody in texas um dallas um my homegirl shawa she doing her thing out there so man i ain't got no choice but to shot them out man they doing their thing man hey i got a special guest in the building but before i even say anything to him man again happy i think it's uh international women's month if I said it wrong, I'm sorry, ladies. I'm sorry. Don't, don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't kill me, man. Like, I'm trying to take this little moment to pay homage to y'all, man. Cause without no, you know, somebody, without no women, it wouldn't be no us. And without no us, it wouldn't be no y'all. And y'all know how the flavor go, man. But salute to all y'all women breaking all kinds of records right now, especially in the political world, especially in the business world. Um, that is not spoke about enough to me, especially since when it comes to black owned businesses. And business, period. Women are taking over. Y'all been a major mark and reaching all kinds of different milestones. So I have no other choice but to acknowledge you all, man. I love what I'm seeing. It's so mo motivating to me as a man to see how even when men ain't on point, y'all on point. You know what I'm saying? Y'all don't get enough credit. And we should have this uh, 365 days old. A year, man, because let me tell you something, man. Women hold it down in the house. Women hold it down on the job. Women hold it down, period, man. So ain't no better competition, man, than, and, and inspiration, man, than y'all, man. So salute to all the women, no matter what race you are. Just women, period, man, because y'all get money, man. And, and even throughout the pandemic, y'all ain't fold. I don't see a bunch of women crying and, and scratching their hair out. You know what I'm talking about? They just put a different, you know, lace front on and um, put some Gorilla Glue on. And they just keep it moving. You know what I'm talking about? Just can't get no hair do for about five more months. Then you're going to have to get a gold front. You know, I'm just joking. <laughs> hey, man, you already know what it is. You know I'm crazy. You know I'm wild. You know I'm on the chain. I got somebody I really respect. Chopping it up with him, and then I'm chopping it up with somebody else, Mr. Terrence Fulton. What's good? What's happening, homie? That was a mouthful, that, huh? Uh, yeah, appreciate that, man. What's up, man? What's up, bro? Man, I'm happy uh, that you're here. You know the circumstances change. You see, all in the background is crazy. I done um ghetto rigged this whole situation in one of your spots, man. <laughs> I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> I'm happy you playing a role with me, man. So. For the people that don't know, my viewers that's watching right now, to just get them a good little bio. If we was in the library right now and we're looking at the back of this book and it's your autobiography, what are we reading? Uh, Terrence Fulton, uh, uh, Cal City, Myrtle Grove, Cal City, uh, real estate investor. Uh, well, now I'm just an investor, um, investing in different, different businesses. Um, and mainly um, got started in real estate, uh, decided to quit my job and uh, step out on faith. That's 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 something worth reading. But I think because I know you for a little bit now, I know there's little lines in between everything that you said. There's still some little lines in between them right. that make you really want to grab that book, man, because you got an interesting story. And 
I think when people say like the American dream, you kind of live in it. And not even kind of, it's just like you live in it and it's, um, you're an inspiration, man. Like you've been an in inspiration since I met you because you got some dope energy. First off, you accessible, you approachable, and then you sort of like me, like you read when somebody like ain't really worth spending time talking to, you know what I'm saying? And this guy hurts your feelings just with his facial expressions alone. It's a lot of bullets in his face, facial expressions, you know what I'm saying? So um, my thing is when I say inspiration, I mean like you, you were a working person. Okay. I appreciate that. You was, you was, you was a nine to fiver. Right. And some people are scared to walk off that job. Can you talk about that a little bit? Like, go into that part of your life. Like, the, I'm talking about, now I want to talk to the inner Terrence, the one who had dreads and the goals and the Camaros and, you know what I'm saying, riding through, looking like a little guy. But you really had a real job and a nine to five and a good paying job, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But then there was a moment in which you said, I want more. I could do more and you bet on yourself. You know what I'm saying? You know how they say you bet on the house. Right. You really bet on yourself. But I want to go in. I don't want to tell it all. This part of this part of your story. So I want to, I want to know what what made you say, I'm tired. I made enough money on this job. I'm out. You know what I'm saying? Like, what was that moment like? Because uh, it's a lot of people that's working jobs that they, they look at you, whether they your mentees, whether it's people that's around you. You took a chance. Some people are still waiting to take that chance. Talk, talk, talk about that individual, not the one that's sitting up here on the 114th floor. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's talk about that guy. Um, I mean, I appreciate, I appreciate all the compliments, man. I, I really do, man. Um, you know, if you get me by myself, then you, you, I'll talk, I'll talk a lot of shit. I mean, I'm sorry, I'll talk a lot of stuff, but. You know, um, it's just honestly, I'm, I'm. What made me just honestly, I just really cut to the chase. I wanted to be rich. I always had aspirations and dreams right. of getting rich. And um, I wish I could put something deeper. It may seem a little shallow to some people, like not your kids, not your family. I mean, but that that's a part of it. That's why I wanted to be rich. Right. Um, and I had that dream ever since I was a child. I was a little boy. It's just I didn't know how to do it other than work. Um, other than work for somebody. So um, I always had the right intentions on getting money. I always wanted to do it honestly. I understood it was going to take time. Right. Um, I, I, morals, principles, um, so certain things I stand on. So I wasn't willing to do anything to get money. Um, I, I'll, I'll come to work. I'll show up. I always was committed and dedicated to the process. Um, I never expected to be, you know, if, of you on chapter 20, I didn't ask you the day of how can I get on your chapter 20 tomorrow? It was like, hey man, what do you what do you need me to do? And whatever I needed to do to get there, man, I was willing to do it. And I didn't want to be outworked. Mm. So that always just been my mindset. It always was a thing that um I always just been driven. I mean, even when I had jobs, I had side hustles, I I, I flipped shoes. I was one of the original guys that sold Jordans before you could actually get them online. I sold candy in school. I uh, I used to pump people gas for money when I stayed in Overtown for a few years um, when I stayed with my mom. Mm. So uh, I don't know where, I, I call it a gift. I think having hustle is a gift. It's something that's in you. I don't think you could teach hustle. Mm. Uh, you could teach a lot of things, but you can't teach hustle. Hustle is- That was is, a question is, 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 I is had something. too, man. Because yeah. everybody ain't got it. But I yeah, wanted but to that's know what from made where me, you're standing, like, do you see that? Is it teachable? I don't think hustle is teachable um, because I gave people the blueprint mm. on how I did it. I like I'm, I'm not lying to nobody. I'm right. not saying that I have done something and I didn't do it. I mean, I have really. Uh, this is the steps. So this is what I have done. I was an open book about it, but I realized certain people couldn't get it done. Right. You know what I'm saying? For whatever the reason is, you know, life happens, things happen, but it, it didn't matter. I could work. I could work. 13, 14 hours at my job and I'll come home and I'll study and I will get on YouTube 
uh, to learn how to do something. Right. So, yeah. Man, look, we already getting in deep into this kitchen, man. We're going to take a little break. We're going to come back to it. Make it do what it do, man. Y'all got the information, man. Work, strive, grind, man. I've been promoting it all week. Where you at? Under a rock. Man, let's get yeah, to it. I appreciate it. that. You know, I never really, I, I just paid attention that you gr grind mode and I'm work, <laughs> strive, grind. So right. I guess right. that's just how the world aligns. And I never really yeah. thought about how like, grind, like, grind mode. I right. Man, I've been grinding on everything, man. I actually, everything that I've ever did had grind with it. That's crazy because my nickname used to be Grind, but I never really stuck with it. Um, I had Grind Time TV over a million viewers a month, like years ago. Gave Flo Rida one of his very first interviews. Um, Briscoe, Gunplay, a lot of people like that. Then I had the Grind Magazine. Then I had Grind Mode. Then I had Respect My Grind, my, grind Mode. Um, Grind. I had Grind Mode 101. Everything, all my mixtapes, Unstoppable Grind. Like, Grind is always somewhere around me. So that's why even when I got your IG for the first time, I was like, this supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? Like, without, you know. Anyway, back to a little break, man. We're going to cut to a break. We're going to come right back. What's up, people? Man, why y'all not over here, man? Oh, because y'all ain't got the address? Good. Don't come over here. Yeah. It's a legend right here, man. It's a legend I'm sitting next to, man. We talk about Trey. We talk about Rick Ross. We talk about Pitbull, Flo Rida, JT Money, uh, Uncle Luke. Man, he's right up there with those guys. They just can't. The only difference is they older than they came before him. But he birthed a whole um, movement, the um, whole genre of music. It's called juke music, right? Juke music, like fucking New Jack Swing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So uh, that, that's cool. We're gonna do like a 15 minute set for this one. Okay. And then when we come back, I'm gonna make that video. And I'll see how the world. If y'all got any time. questions, man, I'm chilling at my spots. Yeah. I appreciate you. What's up, Clee? Thanks, Marla. What's up, Doug? Uh, Dedrick, Vaughn, you know, whoever else on there. You know, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Um, doing an interview. Hey, man, you know who it is, man. Respect my grind live each and every Tuesday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, April the 19th, Unsigned Hype Showcase, man. You already know the big show is going down right here in Miami. We're at Studio 183. Lines, man, they brought that old 183, 183rd back. Y'all don't know about Studio 183? That was before your time, man. You already know what it is, man. That's hosted by Joel the Don, Jewel the Don, and me. So you already know if I'm hosting something, it's going down. Um, I started off the show and I uh, shout out Born to Win. That's apparel, man. They all the way out in Trenton, New Jersey. So salute to them if you're trying to cop this shirt, man. It's Born to Win LLC, man. So salute to everybody that's out of town that be showing a lot of love, man. Everybody that's locked up right now that's showing love. Metro West, TGK, Stockade, everybody from Pork and Beans all the way down to Florida City, all the way to Carroll City. You know what I'm saying? You already know what it is, man. It's a lot of love involved. So I get the love. I get the love back. I get the respect. I get a Respect back, man. We still here with Terrence, man. He doing his thing. Oh, Grammy. I ain't get a chance to talk to Jesse about that because Jesse ain't live right now. We had a little technical difficulty because um, he trying to say a Transformer Blue, but I really think he ain't play, pay that power. <laughs> that MP and L ain't come through. You know what I'm talking about? You know, some of them stimulus checks ain't came, and we, we still surviving off them. You know, so shout out to everybody who already got their stimulus. Uh, if you have it, Got your stimulus, that's going to be this week. If you have, you need to holler at Terrence and figure out what you need to do with it. You need to drop it on one of these Airbnbs. But like, maybe he'll just let you, you know what I'm talking about? Maybe he'll let you get a little discount. We're going to put a discount code at the bottom, man. 1400 You could be a mentee for three days, but you got to type in the password or code word chaos, man, and you're going to get like, don't, don't count me in on that because you're going to lose your money, man. I ain't even going to lie to you. But, yeah, man, the Grammys was crazy. 
Uh, definitely salute the uh, little baby, man. That 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 performance was out of control, man. It was awesome, but it it was what my people needed. You know what I'm saying? He did a whole movie. If y'all didn't see it, go look it up on YouTube, man. His performance was amazing. Uh, Beyonce, salute to you. What a better time. What this is like the best time to have that uh situation have happen if you don't if you're unaware if you've been stuck under a rock. Um, she has the most Grammys of any woman of any time in history nobody has more than her right now she almost has the most out of all performers in life and i think is the 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 world record is like 32 or 33 and right now she's holding about 25 or something like that uh 28 28 so she got five more to go and she's gonna get that with the next album you already know that so I mean, she can get it in a lifetime, man. She young. She's still, I think, in the last part of her 30s. So we got a lot of time to lock that down, man. So definitely should, uh, salute to uh, Beyonce. Megan Thee Stallion, Cardi B, that performance was real. Coco-ish, Rolex-ish, G5-ish, The Office-ish. And uh, I loved it. You know what I'm talking about? That made me feel at home, bro. Let me tell you something, boy. When you see the woman's dying, that's why with the wine, why would the day, why would the... You know what I'm talking about? I almost went to the ATM, boy. Just threw it at my TV, man. You know, because I still want my money back. But yeah, man, so salute to them. Jet skis, pontoons, yachts, boats. I got them. Stop playing with me. Holler at me. You know what I'm saying? Also, uh, Mocha Mommy. I don't know if uh, Terrence drank coffee, but I'm leaving this with him. You know, maybe one of his guests can use it. This is the uh, Brazil Santos. The reason I know that uh, this is uh, good coffee because when I took it out of the bag, Terrence had smelled it down the hallway. Uh, neighbors came in here. They wanted some Starbucks. But I was like, nah, that ain't Starbucks. That's Mocha Mommy. You know what I'm talking about? Black-owned network. You see how loud that is when I picked it up? But that's a loud, boy. Hey, shout out to Mocha Mommy, man. In the pack. No, this is not what you think it is. It didn't come from California. The other, it came from California. But it is not what you think. And read closely. This is not what you think it is. It's coffee. Stop playing with me. So, yeah, man, shout out to that. Mr. Terrence, a.k.a. Work Strive Grind. What's good, man? What's happening, man? Um, so you left the job. Right. You said you was tired of it. Right. What was the first move, though? Because I know it, but I want you to say it again. Like, did you just get a property? Did you get an apartment? You're not. You didn't start off right here. No. You started off where? Man, I, I, honestly, well, I mean, the first thing I didn't do was get a property. That wasn't the first thing. The first thing I, I had to be, I had to be fed up with where I was, and I don't think people understood that. People didn't understand that because, and I didn't want to talk to nobody about it because, t according to society standards, I was making good money. Mm. I was making about eighty thousand dollars a year at the job. But I grinded a lot. Anybody that worked with me, um, which you know, one of my old coworkers is on on, on a Facebook live, mm. I used to grind. Like I was probably one of the most productive people there, and I stayed from like like how Ross once said on on the Nipsey song from eight a.m. to ten p.m. That's on a rainy day. Mm. It was like I stayed. I would come in uh, thirty minutes earlier than everybody, and I would stay later than everybody else. That's tough. So I would work from four p.m. until six a.m. 7 a.m. It's times I don't I, like. I came in the light. The, uh, it was light outside. I left and it was light outside. The next day, so I always had to hustle and to grind. But you get tired of that. So I, the first thing I did, I always like to tell people, is not getting the property. I had to develop. I had to get tired of where I was, and then I had to educate myself. And once I educated myself on what I wanted to do, um, that's when. Um, um, I, I developed, I, I invested in me, I invested in my mindset. So what's crazy was I downloaded books, right? Ille I mean, I downloaded uh, music illegally, which most of us do, right? Definitely. But I had paid for books. Mm. I actually purchased the books with my own money. Uh, because I, 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 even though, you know, I could have downloaded a lot of books, but I wanted to feel good about I was investing in me. I didn't want to cheat the grind or cheat the process. And that was just more so of a moral thing. Right. Um, and once I did that, I started listening to books. So while I was at GFS, I was at the job, I was at work. I would uh, drive. I would drive around the warehouse, and while people would think I was listening to music, um, I was actually listening to books the entire time. I was slick. So physically, I was there. Mentally, 
I was where I am today, mentally, though. Man, it's all about what you want. That's crazy that you said that because you sent me to a moment in, in, in my life where I used to have like an earpiece in my ear mm. and I always would be listening to like anything that was instructional, like a do-it-yourself situation. Even if I wasn't watching it on a job, mm -hmm. I, I want to hear it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And motivational things. Like, that's what got me on to, like, just say the Gary V's. I've been on him for a while. Yeah. So just hearing it, I, um, I, I would have Gary to keep v, it in bro. my, yeah. I got, see, that's the thing, though. You say Gary, like you mentioned Gary V, right? Um, I heard about him through another guy I listened to named Andy Frisella, the MF CEO project. But I tell people it's kind of a domino effect. When you step out with your mind and you start listening to somebody that, first of all, that don't look like you, don't talk like you, don't come from where you come from. When you just say, I'm going to just want to see what they got to say. Let me see. Yeah, let me try them for, for, for instance, right. for once. Right. And then it just like, boom. And you realize that you're no different from um, anyone else, you know, and then, then they would tell you who they to. And then you go do your research. So the, my main two people I listened to, was Andy Frisella and E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher, which was Dr. Eric that's Thomas. That's a good one, too. Yeah, Eric Thomas. Yeah, and, that's um, who I listen to. And um, Les Brown was another one. Jim Ronan. Um, it was a bunch of them, man. But I just, when I get tired of one, I had to switch to another. I still do that yeah. because I just want it in want my system. Fresh. Yeah, like I always fresh. want something in my system that's like productive and positive, man. Like um, a lot of people think I just rap all day. Like I can't, bro. Like I... Like all that kind of stuff is like it's it it get in your system. It'll start like detaching you from the things that you're trying to get to. And and rap 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 music only took me ever so far. Like I don't know. It, it used to be either gospel or motivational stuff or stuff that actually gives you the direction. Like because I I like I like people that say things like you you won't just say oh yeah you can have this. No, you be like you can have this if you do this 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 and this. You don't have to do exactly what I did because I did job $80,000, $70,000, this many hours, da, 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 da. Because somebody could do exactly what you did, but it still don't come up with the same results. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I could do exactly what Michael Jordan did. Exactly. And still, like, if you say, oh, yeah, I played basketball for four hours every before 6 o'clock in the morning, every morning, five days a week. And I could do it for seven and still be trash. You know what I mean? So some things I do believe can't be taught but that hustle if it's in you is really in you so man i commend you for that man because j just like those little testimonies they go a long ways man because every time i speak to you i get something from you it's like to be interactive with you and i know it's like no different than what i would do with a Les brown you know what i mean like i'm like dog they, he really like giving like game that you can utilize right now though you know what i mean so with that Cause you got like fifty different businesses, but they still in the same world. Mm -hmm. Even with the mentee situation, um, do did you how how long did it take you to get into the mentee world? Too that that's a question. I, I think I don't, I don't think I ever asked you that. Like you did the properties, mm -hmm. you took some L's. Yeah, because I remember you said that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, I can be transparent with that. Um. You didn't just jump into that world of real estate and then just win, 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 win. Nah. What was that part like? It was humbling. But yeah. but but at the same time, I'm so I can be so green to it and ignorant that I don't even know I took a loss. Mm -hmm. You ever had somebody like crack a joke and insult you, but you don't even realize it was an insult? <laughs> it don't like, register, yeah, yeah. Oh, that was an insult or right. that was sarcasm? I, right. I, I didn't know. I didn't catch that. Right. So when I did take L's, I didn't know they was really L's until people told me wow. it was an L. You get what I'm saying? Right. Because I just looked at it as I, I was doing what I said I was going to do. I said I was going to flip houses. Right. And I didn't know if like, if, okay, this house is 400, I was just giving a number, $100,000 but I, I got 80000 for it. That's a $20,000 loss. Right. I didn't know that. I just, like, or if I overpaid for something, mm. I just know that I, I bought it. Right. And I didn't got... know I overpaid for it. Oh, damn, he charged me double? Oh, yeah, he got you. And I'm like, oh, for real? Like, I didn't know he did the work, though. 
You get what I'm saying? So I didn't even know it was L's till somebody had to educate me on the L's. I was just happy to be doing it. I was just happy not to have to go to a fucking job. I'm sorry. I, I was so happy not to go to a job. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that was pretty much it. But then, man, that's a blessing, though, in disguise, though. Because you know how many people take an L and then it's like they final hoorah. That's because they're looking for something. I, I, I didn't... When it but came I mean to, that economically, too, though. Because they might have took an L and okay, then... Okay, true. But right. here's the thing, though. I didn't get in this game and said I was gonna make a million the f- the first year. Right, right. So 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 here's what I did. I made eighty thousand dollars, which I made. I'm mean, actually I made close to a hundred thousand dollars. But my final year at GFS, my final, mm-hmm. the 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 2015 year, because right. I quit in the middle of 2016. The final year I had made eighty four thousand dollars in something some some hundreds, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so when I quit my job, I didn't expect to come out and make eighty thousand. I say, okay, if, T, if you make $20,000 or $10,000 your first year of business, that's a win. Mm, because right. GFS, that company is a company that was around 100 years. Right. I didn't make 80 grand off rip. I started right. at I see what you 34 mean. grand. Right. And I, then the next year I made 50 grand. And then the next year I made 53 grand, like, like that. Right. So I always had that mentality. I was just happy to make my own money. Nobody gave it to me. Right, right. I, I earned that. I, de- I like that. So that, I went in with that mindset. I knew I was at chapter one and I put my, I put my currency, my currency was meeting people. Mm-hmm. So if I met you, that's money in the bank. So I'm like, okay, all right. Uh, I, I met, met chaos today. All right, cool, man. You know, I don't know what's going to come out of this relationship, but I'm going to follow up with him tomorrow okay. and whatever happens from there. And I was just okay with getting the relationships, not right. the money. So now, where, 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 where did you lead to the, the um, not subscription, but like the mentee situation? Like, well, I, I was there too many people asking you to do. I, I, I didn't, I didn't, bro. I, again, like it was one of those situations where I was communicating with somebody, um, and, and they introduced me to their family. He was older than me, actually, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Hey, y'all, I want y'all to meet um, my homeboy. He, he's my mentor," and I'm. I'm younger than you, man. Like mm-hmm. I'm no, I don't, at the time I have any grades, so I'm like, man, I ain't got no grade help, you know. But I didn't know that he right. he he helped me in that regard, right? You know, um, I I just used to give him like I won't say game, it was just a form of a conversation of what I was doing, right? But he looked at it as like, man, no, that's free game, and then so like I said, when he introduced me, said I was his mentor, and I was just like, wow, you know, and man, that's how I kind of went in that situation, and then I just. And eventually end up monetizing the situation because many is a few other people that felt the way he felt. I just wasn't charging people. Right. I was willing to if wow. I would I just wanted to talk to people about real estate. Wow. Because I didn't have nobody to talk to. Who I'm gonna talk to about real estate that was around? I couldn't communicate with nobody. Right. So anybody that allowed me to speak about real estate and 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 just talk about what I have learned, what I know, I I, I did it. I didn't, and it wasn't about making no money. I was just happy that somebody would fucking finally listen to me. Right, right. Yeah. So, so now, um, and I know we got to take a little break. So, matter of fact, I'm going to say that question for like two seconds from now. We're going to take a little break, run to some little videos, or do whatever we're going to do, pay some bills, and we're going to get back to it. Hey, man, we back right now, man. We've been chopping it up with the homie Terrace, man. He's giving a lot of game right now about his real estate life, this. This Airbnb life, this Mentee life, this life life, this Miami life that a lot of people want to live, man. So shout out to everybody that got to tune in, man. You already know it's Respect My Brian Live each and every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. We still going to shop it up with Terrence. Terrence is going to help me tackle this big guy right here, man. He about 900 pounds. He about 11 feet tall. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all done seen him in the NFL. You know what I'm saying? Snatching quarterback. The whole neck off. You know what I'm talking about? So... Man, what's up, man? We got the homie Jerry Missy on here. What's happening, homie? What's happening? What's happening, man? Good to be here, boy. Good long time no here. Yeah, man. I, I, you always be working, so I don't ever get to see you with Jerry on. So, so I, you got Jerry on. You got shades on right now, man. You know, right, I, man. <laughs> you, you know I had to tap in with you. So for those who have no clue of who you are, and uh, they ain't got no TV, they live on the rock, they ain't got no radio, they don't listen to music, period. Give them a quick summary of who you are. 
Well, my name is Jeremy Messi, a.k.a. Mr. Matt, uh, 10 year NFL vet, uh, music mogul, independent. Uh, uh, got got some classic records, you know, went to school, roomated with platinum artists, guys that curated Ciroc, a whole bunch of stuff. You were there in the beginning, so you know what time it is. Right, 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 man. You've been putting in that work, man. Where you from originally? Because I'm. I'm I'm originally from a small town right outside of Savannah, Georgia, uh, Statesboro, Georgia. It's man, to the man, west. When, that when you say Statesboro, that 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 may be crazy. I'm mean, like, we might be related. You know, you know when I came, when you had me come to Statesboro, um, um, you know, I got family out there, and then you know, I knew about Statesboro, I know about Swainsboro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you know, that's most of my family from my great grandma and all that. They born yep. and raised in Swainsboro, man. So I yep. got family. All throughout there, Albany, all in that Bible Belt. I'm all throughout there, man. Man, believe it or not, bro. Believe it or not, it's a lot of Miami. Like growing up, it was so many people from Miami and South Florida. Like they grew up around me. Right. You know, Georgia kind of the roots for a lot of us because you know that's where a lot of slaves. You know, a lot of people transported down to Miami and transported up to New York and. Right. But but you know Georgia, Florida, Mississippi, and you know Louisiana, those are like essential states. You know, so right. don't even surprise. You know Andre Johnson, people from from uh, Scriven County. So right. you know that's a little country place. But you know it's a lot of Dade County. Like we got this little town uh, right outside the state called Clyami. We call it Clyami because all the Dade County boys be there. Right, right, man. You already know. So run me, run me back. You gave a summary. Um. And I know I ain't got a bunch of time with you or him now, but um, as far as the how did how did the football situation play into because we know you we know you went to the music right now we know you love music before that because I met you before you even like got all into the NFL situation you had the group going on that was a hundred years ago bro so yeah. it, it's funny though that I'm sitting on the sidelines watching your life play in to like what it did but I'm like you did the music situation. But what made you like really take the whole football situation serious? Was it like other people, or was it like a real un? You couldn't sleep with this passion. I, I mean, it it was one of those things where you know I, I'm I'm the type you know I start something I got to finish it. So right. football was one of them things that that I said you know what God gave me the ability to do it. I might as well do it at the, you know its fullest fullest ability and capability. And I kind of put the music to the side for a little while, 2011, and um, and that's when you know football took off. You know what I mean? Got got a big contract, and uh, you know I just used both of my passions. You know I feel I use I use one to feed the other pretty much. You know. Let me let me ask you something, and I don't want to dig too too far deep off in the pockets, but I hear a lot of uh, because all of us black men want to go to the NFL, the NBA. We either want to play sports, rap, um, or sell drugs, or scam. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of pros and cons to even your life with the with the pro situation. Because I swear I want to get into your body. You can answer this, or you don't have to. When you got signed, what, what did you get signed for? Uh, you talking about my first big contract? First big contract. I had I had a twenty eight million dollar deal. Twenty eight million dollar deal. Now, yeah. for those who have this football dream for twenty eight million dollars a lot, bro. We can do a lot with that. Hey, um, break it down in an honest way, though. Um, how does that get broke down, like either from the first situation or throughout time? Because we tend to hear, okay, this person got fifty million, forty million, ten million, they broke after mm -hmm. after the NFL. Because what is the life expectancy like? I think five years or something like that. When they no, said two five, years. Two years. He said two years. I'm telling you this because you can't hear me. He said two years. That's the life expectancy financially for an NFL player? I mean, that that that's the expectancy for him to, you know, um, be in the league. Right. And, you know, and everything else is pretty much extra. You know, you bless. Right. Hey, but you get, you know, you get the five. You know, I was able to get the ten. So right. So two you know, years is a blessing if you're in the NFL, but five years is a, is a big deal. I mean, it's a jump start on life. Like a lot of people right. take it, they want to take it, but I took it as uh, as a jump start. And once I got right. jump started, you know, I was already in the music business, already doing my thing. Right. I, you know what? I'm already here. 
might as well make it do what it do. My uh, my wife had got pregnant, you know, with my first daughter, and I had to I had to make a play. You know what right. I'm saying? So that baby, that baby gave you a different motivation. Yeah, it gave it gave me a different because I ain't want to walk away from the game as one of those guys saying, "Hey, man, I did this, I did that, and I ain't got nothing to show for it when it's over." Man, she big now though, bro. Because when I was when I was when did we do that? That was your birthday party when we did Jacksonville and Statesboro. Which, which one was it? I, it was my birthday party for Statesboro. Right. It was, who was it? It was Tom G. I mean, uh, Ronald, uh, that was Bash in the Borough. Bash in the Borough. Bash in the Borough. Right, that, right, right, right. That was That's 2011. What, 10 years God, ago. Time be flying, bro. Yeah. That's when you had all of the sororities and all that. But your little girl was this big. She was just yep. dancing yep. around on the basketball court. Yep, yep. So what's she, like 35? Hey, nah, nah, nah. She, she, she for the B10. <laughs> so that was nine right. years ago, actually. It was she nine was just that little, you know why I'm laughing? Because, dog, that's like, she was your daughter's a little bit. Yeah. Right on that, that, that side. You know what I'm saying? Because he got a little girl that, he got an older child, like, you know what I'm saying? His, his daughter, his, he got an older daughter, then he got a son that's taking over the business. I really think it's about his son. Like, I think he did all that. Because he ain't really that good at math. <laughs> for this guy to make all these memes, I really think it's some behind it, but he can just be trying to take all the credit. You feel me? <laughs> but, um, nah, all jokes aside, man, like, so the money breakdown, people tend to get confused. And I, I promise I don't want to dig all into your life because your life is your life. But sometimes I want the transparency so other people that look at this, they understand that, you know, everything that just don't drop in your pocket, you got lawyers, you got agents, you Absolutely. got lifestyle and you got taxes absolutely that's the that's the biggest problem right there <laughs> yeah because say this is right you know my signing bonus was 11 million dollars uh right. up front and i ain't see out that 11 i ain't see but shoot i seen like eight of it six seven right so the upfront money was 11 million yeah see by eight by seven, by seven, seven, five, seven, five, seven, five, and then they paid. And then for the season, I think I was making 230,000 a week. Wow, 230,000. <laughs> I'll try, that's, I'll try that's, to get back to that, still, bro. That still made my, my head itch a little bit. Like, that's you know what I'm saying? I said, yeah. you could do a lot with that, you know what I'm saying? But, but um, awesome. let me ask you this, say it again. I said, that's just doing the football season. That's just doing the football season. Yeah, after the season over, no more paper. No more paper after the football season. So that's a wrap. It's over. So now you living off of that for the whole off season. Absolutely. So my thing is, um, give me the pros and cons real quick of, of that whole why, why, why we in season. I mean, for guys like us, it's pros because, you know, it, it's a professional job, so I'm going to. Okay, like so I know I got 16 weeks guarantee, 16 to 20 weeks guarantee. You know what I'm saying? Uh 16 guaranteed, but I can add a four on and they ain't but 20 grand a game. So really the playoffs you taking a pay cut. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, the playoffs is a cut. Yeah, it's a pay cut, but like it's extra money though. Cut. It's extra money, so it can't be a cut, but you're not making what you're making during the season. Oh, you're not you're not making what you're making during the playoffs. Wow. Now, and if you win the Super Bowl, you get a hundred grand. And if you lose, I think Super you get Super Bowl is a win. Oh, okay. That makes sense now. So when you win that Super Bowl, that's a whole another check. Right. Yeah. You get like a like hundred. Okay. So you got a chance to make you got a chance to gross by two hundred. Two hundred. Now, now here's, here's a question that I have because um a lot of people tend to do um the wrong thing with the money. Do you feel like um, if you had to do it all over again, would you put more into music? Would you get into real estate? Would you get into business? What you think? I, I mean, I would have held back on a lot of artists because it was a lot of artists that was a waste of money. You know what I'm saying? But but it was it was an experience too, and you know you learn right. a bit. But I mean, I'd rather learn the business. You know, owning some land or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like you know the money you spend on them guys. I could have had condos. I could have had you know it's a lot of things. I could have bought all the, you know, the shit that I got, the stuff, the, the things that I have now. Right. I could have had then. Especially then. Yeah, like right. instead of, you know, so, you know, right. if I could have done it all again, I would have watched who I worked with. And uh, and that's right. pretty much it. 
Yeah, like, um, that's interesting that you said. Because I remember you did have a, uh, man, you had an army of artists, man. But I felt like your heart was in the right place, though, uh, Mince. But I felt like sometimes, man, them dogs got to have that hunger. You feel me? You got to have yeah. that dog. You feel me? Like, so... I was seeing them too much too early. They were getting forward too fast. Cash was seeing too right, much. Right, right. You was, I ain't gonna lie, like you was, you was, you was doing a lot. You was doing too much. <laughs> like this ain't me hating on your artists, but I kind of from a distance, from what I'm saying, I'm like, the boys gotta, they gotta get musty, dirty, muddy. Blood. Yeah, they ain't getting like, dirty. I had, to, I had to do all that. I had to, I had to bleed out of it. You know that, Right. You know, this from when I was in hot studios and I was really putting in that work. I was like, well, I couldn't have what they had. But then sometimes I appreciate it. My route because I nothing was given. Like I really had to be in traffic, padding out flyers, selling magazines, taking L's, lights getting cut off, saying, "Hey, well, my lights ain't gonna be like this no more." That that kind of stuff will really humble you. Like I've never been hostile, diddy, no way. You know what I mean? Like, right. and, and even when I got like I got a one point two million dollar deal with Grimo, and that wasn't no long. You know, I ain't never like a loan. Yeah, it's like you know what I mean. Like sports different. So yeah. that one point two look good on paper, but right. then you start breaking it down: radio promotion, um, per diem, this, that, traveling, radio promotion. Yep. Like, uh, you know what I mean? Traveling, right? Like all that stuff get broken. Like, man, ain't no money in this. Ain't but no money. Still got. They still got to recoup. Absolutely. Right. So my 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 couple of my first couple of checks weren't really about nothing, but I'm I'm a playmaker, and just like before you got on, he like he got a dog in him. You know what I mean? Like Terrence got a real dog, like. He gonna take a dollar and stretch it to a thousand, and that's how I was too. Like I took that first check, and I ain't, I wasn't worried about buying no chain or doing nothing goofy. Like you know what I'm saying? Especially I got family still in the projects at that time, so I'm like, man, I everything I do got to count. Right. I gotta, I gotta put numbers on the board. So I took that and bought equipment, and then rolled over to that, and then made this make money while I was on the road, and I was, you know what I mean? Because I always been in, on the on the music side, but then I, you know, I always had a web show. Or, magazine or something going on to make money when I come back home. Mm. So yeah man what you said was a mouth uh, a mouthful man that's that's awesome bro like so now you play what you play for three teams or four? I played for I got drafted to the New England Patriots. Patriots then to the 49ers. I oh 49ers I ain't remember that hold on say it say it you said I Patriots 49ers Jaguars Jaguars Broncos, Dallas Cowboys. Broncos and Dallas Cowboys. I remember four out of three out of the four. So, with all that, what was your favorite team? Cowboys, man. Because I Cowboys. mean, well, you dude, say you got, you got his best yet. yeah. I mean, and not even that. It 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 was just it was just you know, being in Duval, you know, Jacksonville, the hood, man. So my mindset, my mindset was different in Jacksonville than it was in Dallas. When I got to Dallas, it was strictly about football because, I mean, that's all, that's, that that's they, they, football, they get a love. They get that love and they love, like, you was making so much extra money just being in the city, you know what I'm saying, let alone a star for the team. You know, I wasn't there, but a year and a half and I was already in the Dallas star. Oh, yeah. You know, right. it, uh, they showed me a lot of love, man. So, you know, when you get that type of love show, you, you gotta go out there and give it y'all, you know. Yeah, it seemed like you could be more focused in Dallas. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Playing for the Cowboys is like it's such a football, you drowning in it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so yeah, man, that's that's dope, man. Um, so music wise, let's bring it up to tonight. We're gonna take like two break uh, like a, a two second break. I'm gonna come back to this and we're gonna chop it up and um Almost wrap it up, man. Time be flying, bro. But um, think about what you got on your mind that we're going to touch on. And we're going to come back, man. Right here on Video Mix. Respect my brand a lot. You know? Hey, man, we back. Video Mix, you know where you get all the best videos, man. Shout out to everybody from Dane County, Broward County, West Palm Beach, everybody throughout the whole state of Florida, man. Um, I'm still locked in with the homie Terrence. I'm still locked in with Mr. Mix, man. Um, Terrence. We talked about a lot of different brands, a lot of different hustles. Before we go any further, tell the people how to get in contact with you. That's what I need from you. Uh, Worst Drop Brand on IG, uh, Terrence Fulton with an E, not an A, on uh, Facebook. And okay. Worst Drop Brand on Clubhouse. Um, 
You know what we didn't talk about before we get back to him? The workshop situation. Right. We didn't really get to touch on that. Mm -hmm. um, I had the honor of watching you and your partner, mm -hmm. really Michael Jordan, Scotty Pippen, mm -hmm. um, real estate and business and taxes and land and from everything from Airbnbs and all that. What gave you the idea to do that? And how's that going now? Um, I, what gave me the idea about it was, um, you know, I just seen um, it was uh, you no know, seminars going around, but they wasn't giving the, the full logistics of the information. I won't say they were giving false information, mm -hmm. but there was things that I have experienced in the real estate world that wasn't being talked about. Right. Not, so I wanted to educate people on that. So I started out at Starbucks doing it for free and eventually ended up transitioning and making it a uh, hustler's workshop at SLS Brickle. Um, and uh, since COVID, we've just been doing it online. We going to get it back to SLS, but, you know, when, once COVID happened, you know, we have to do the social distancing thing, so we just like, we have to let that die out, so it's been about a year now since we had it there, I mean, we had it there for about two years straight, uh, then we have a, have a good relationship with them, so I'll be uh, bringing it back, but it'll be just a real estate uh, seminar instead of credit real estate. Man, I'm going to say this, and I'm going to respectfully cut you off, like, Whenever you got out here and we get this back rolling with this hustlers uh workshop, um, Mitch, you gotta connect with my boy because let me tell you something. It's so professional, it's so stylish. When they was doing it in the um the hotel SLS, um, they had the book set out, and from the time you got there, bro, you just didn't want to leave because it was like being it, it wasn't annoying like a college class because I, I ain't like college, bro. Like, I really couldn't get with, like, the school format. <laughs> but it was it was really set where they broke down a whole agenda and they really got them questions answered. Like, it was clubhouse. It was a clubhouse room before clubhouse. That's the best way in person. Mm -hmm. That's the best way. I don't know if you like, up on the clubhouse scene right now, but what? It's, 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 it was a good place to be, man, because if you know nothing about real estate, they going to dumb it down from lamest terms all the way to, like, you know what I mean, like, real brainy ass. Like, and, and then they simplify it in a way where, like, I'm kind of dumb in that area. That ain't my world. Mm -hmm. But you, you don't make me feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'm going to say, man. I compliment you on that and your partner, like, because I never felt uncomfortable. And y'all don't make me feel like, this guy doesn't know this. This guy, he doesn't know the square footage of the ceiling with the roof. Like, they'll make you feel that way. Like, they make, they'll come down to where you're at and bring you where they need you to be at. And then they're going to show you how you're going to profit or just the littlest things. Like, like even like, okay, they was building this situation. Like, one thing that I got from you that I never thought about was like, man, I might not even put the most expensive stuff in here. Like, I want the double pane, triple pane glass. There's bulletproof and windproof, and you like, well, I'll do this for safety because that's what it needs within the tile. I'm not gonna go uh eleven dollars for each square foot. I might go eleven cents. Because when John Doe move in here or Mr. Mintz move in here, he might say, you know what, I want all red tile. So you're gonna spend all this money, cut your profit down. That's one thing I learned from you, and I don't think give away too much. But it's just the little things that I got from you. I'm like, man. It sound dumb, it sound lame, but dog, like I, every time I'm around him and his team, I end up learning something, man. Y'all gotta connect, man. Y'all definitely gotta connect because, man, down here. Oh, to connect with the brother. Yeah, man, you definitely gotta connect. This is one of the high rides he was showing me. I've been to like three of his spots, but then he got a couple of this. We, that, we in like midtown, downtown type, and you can see some of his other spots on the other side, man. He do, he do very well. Um. Before I jump back to Mr. Mintz, man, I know we ain't got a lot of time. Um, this is what I do need from you, man. Um, you came from that lower tier. You came from the light, lights being off. You came from that struggle. You came from some losses. Go back to that mind frame. There's somebody that's watching this. He 21. He 19. His lights probably done got cut off. He got a pretty good job, but he want he he believed that he could do it because you learned inspire him, just like you inspired a lot of other people. 
Look at that camera. Don't, you ain't looking at me. You ain't worrying about me. Get that man some advice. That's gonna get him to the next level. Uh, well, one one advice I would give anybody is don't get discouraged and educate yourself. Um, it ain't Trump fault. It ain't white people fault. It ain't. It's nobody fault. It is what it is. And if you got the that's the cards you was dealt, and you got to play the best hand that that. That you're dealt and get out from the thing that I, I always tell people get out of the mindset of I ain't friendly. We grew up with the I ain't friendly, I ain't talking to him, I ain't talking to her. The only way to make a ton of money and be successful is you have to network. You got to meet other people, you got to shake hands. Don't be ignorant, be a sponge. You don't know it all, and if you don't know something, ask. It's no dumb question, I promise you. It's no dumb question. If somebody makes you feel like it's a dumb question, and that's not the person you need to be meeting or linking up with. If you don't know something, ask. Man, that's real. Again, get the contact information out. And then when you do that, whatever shout outs and all that kind of information, man, that you want to give out, man, let's get to it. Uh, shout out to Hustlers Workshop. <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> man, shout out to that team. Hey, Mint, music. Um, I know you done did records. With Mr. Uh, Scarface, who's who's the god of this uh, South? I'm gonna say the god of the South, man, because he he real. that he he the real forefather. I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. Real. I've been around face a couple times. He's just like he a real cool dude, uh, real knowledgeable. Uh, Mike Smith, Cody P, Young Cash. Work, work, work. That's still that banger though. That's still that banger. Down, still- Florida Classic. Yeah, that's still my song, bro. Um, who else have you worked with, and who else do you want to work with? I I work with uh, Mystical Kevin Gates. Mystical Kevin uh, Gates. I, I, I want to work with that little young cat, Raw Wave, man. I was supposed to work with him some years back. Wow, Raw Wave was good. Oh, well, I like Raw Wave. Right. Um, with your situation. Um, and I'm it's I don't know if I'm asking the question or I'm just throwing it out there to see what you think. Um, do you feel like it's more difficult when you are uh, athlete and you go, you know what I mean? Because I've been around the money bowls and a lot of different other artists, man, that, that have been great um in the NFL or the NBA, and then they either convert or sometimes people don't know that. Like because I knew you music first. I ain't nobody football. That's crazy. Right. right. And then, People that are out here, they got it the opposite way. You understand? Where it's like, yeah. well, I know him from, you know, like he played from Cowboys and all that. You know what I mean? Like, is it hard for you? And that's one question. And the other question is, what do you think it's going to take for you to go from this level to like uh, whoever, uh, like a uh, uh, win, win, win? I mean, it's just being humble, man. Humble, like like you said, man. You got to humble yourself, man. You got to be able to deal with people. Like, really? yeah, a lot of amount of money. I done made that amount of money. But these street promoters matter. When you when you realize everything matters, everything, that's when you execute and you utilize all every resource you got. And that's what happened. You know, over time, I was able to run into the fleet DJs, bigger rankings, and people from all over the globe, all the local street promoters and people that's out pushing records so i i figured it out myself so right i was able to you know just by opening my mouth you know uh i was able to crack the code find out how radio work find out how this works find out that you can get this for free if you do it this way find out you can get this place in foot locker if you make this move and a lot of stuff free man like um yeah it is you know, relationships, the relationships go a long way too. You know the relationships not the relationship not fees out the way, man. When like when you lack knowledge, people could charge you for anything. You you think you're getting a deal, but it's not a deal. You know what I'm saying? Right. It, it just it just being aware and understanding your surroundings and, and and most importantly being humble. Right, that's true. That's true. I can't say that, man, because a lot of uh, what other people I watch people pay top dollar for. Uh, for me, it's nothing but a phone call away, or like my access is different than the average because I got keys to that. You know what I mean? And you can relate to your world because you could almost say that with credit. For you to have a certain level of credit, you got access to stuff that the average Joe Blow don't have because you can walk in, get 
this bank ain't, man, I need 110 right now. You know what I'm saying? Because they trust you. That's another thing, too. It's based on that trust because people trust my name and my face. Like, he don't keep a dirty face. He not doing nothing conniving. And um, I keep my face clean. If I, don't, if I don't do nothing else, I keep my debts low and I keep my face clean. If I ain't learned nothing from my grandfather, that's how it is. If I die tomorrow, I don't think I'm going to owe too many of nobody. You know what I mean? Right. And that's how I live. Like, I'd rather be broke right now and get yep. this money back. Absolutely. If I owe you $100,000, I need you to get that back. So I'm I need to get it like back. Yeah, like, because I don't want to be ducking. I don't like that. It don't feel it don't, it don't feel, feel good. Feel good. And, and with me, like, when I go through Miami or anywhere I go, like, I, I hold my head high. I'm comfortable because I don't owe nobody nothing. And I don't have enemies unless they're invisible. Most of my enemies probably like just haters, bro. Like, I got haters, probably. But I don't have, like, enemies. Oh, my right. enemies dead. But yeah, man, you know, shout out to that great site. Um, yeah, man. So now, for the guys that are uh, trying to take off either in the sports world or the music world, you're still further than the most. You understand? You still have experience in the music world in the athletic world so now if you want to combine that together i need you to look at that camera give some awesome advice to somebody that may be hurting somebody that's getting low on fuel they get low bro you know we all get low on fuel like man i, I can't take this no more man talk to them right quick man i mean yeah y'all know like i know you know it's all it's the, the tortoise win the tortoise win the race in this game you know what i'm saying it's about those guys who just continuously going and continuously going to where your brand is your ID. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was Jeremy Mincy in the football, but on the streets, I was Mr. Mince. And as time went on, Mr. Mince became a name in the football industry because I emphasized that and I made them call me that. So it's like you just got to keep pushing your brand and you can't let up, man. You know, I know the funds might get low. Find a way to do something with, with no money. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we all don't want to continuously spend. We want to find deals and bargains, but right. you got to find you got to find out how to do certain things yourself so you can save you some money and still be proactive with saving money. You know what I mean? So, preservation is the key, man. Just preserve everything. Yeah. Stack your money up. Don't try to yeah. live the these cats. You know, like I said, I, I was in the NFL ten years. I used to drive when I was with the Dallas Cowboys. I was the only one driving the two thousand four Chrysler three hundred. You know what I'm saying? And it, it right. was funny then. But now some of these cats ain't got no money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So well, that's the only right. The, the same reason the NFL is driving a Ford when everybody wants to drive Lamborghinis and all that. They pulling up in Bentleys. I pull up in my 300, and you know, I ain't got no type of way because I knew, I knew the turtle was gonna win the race. You know right. what I'm saying? Right. And then sometimes you gotta do uh, certain things to even make money with it, man. Some people don't think like that. I know we almost pass our time, but one thing I learned from him too. Um, being around Terrence is some of the like he big on exotic cars like I've been around you too long and now I feel like I can speak for you when you right here you should be speaking for yourself but he was talking about some of these guys driving around with Royces and stuff like that when he was in the NFL when he played for the Cowboys and here it is like he knew the, the tortoise was going to win the race so here it is he got a Chrysler and he's just thugging it out but on the flip side one thing I learned from him was um like he got excited cars and stuff like that. So he rents them out. That's another means. That's man. a big see that's I, smart. Right. That's, that's real bad. smart. And I and I never thought about this. Watch this man. Like he oh uh, he said something to me a while ago. He was like, uh Terrence was like, listen, it's 30 days in a month. So simple as that. He said, if you think like if I got phone calls and I got my Lamborghini for seven days, I don't want to see that for another 20 some days. So if it's being rented out they paying for it. I'm not paying for that car. I put up the upfront, or I had the credit to get the Lamborghini, or the G-Wagon, or the McLaren, and then for the rest of the month. Like, I'll, I might see that four, five days out the month. The rest of the days is being rented and making money, and then, boom, I'm riding my F-150. I don't, I don't need all that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then overlapping. Like, I thought that was creative, man. That stayed with me, though, bro. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I don't want to feel like I'm battling, but... You know what I mean? I've been around you for a little while now. So it's like that. Those little nuggets is preparation for life. Now, I wish I knew that a hundred years ago. So then, like, if I did decide to go that route and say, you know what, I'm going to get this, 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 and this. Yeah. I'm going to take that route now. I think that's slick. Listen, you were saying something about branding. I don't want to forget this. 
Brandon, let's talk about the clothing line, and then uh, we got to get up out of here, man. I see the hat that, you know, me and Terrence say got that. It's just like hats. I like hats. I don't understand why you ain't that. I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> we got we got you man you know we got the uh new new clothing brand we uh comfy kush clothing uh as, as y'all can see y'all know what kush stand for you know what i'm saying not not green either you know what i mean it's, right here you know us you know what i'm saying so for us and it, 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 it and, and and you know it's a beautiful thing you know uh starting a company with your wife you know me and my wife and uh, it's been, you know, it's been some turbulence. You know, we've been fighting this litigation with, with a billion dollar company. I can't say their name, but that all I, all I want to say is, though, we we out here fighting and, you know, fighting for our name. It's, our, it's been our name. They, and in the corporate world, if you don't stand on your own, they'll take it. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, definitely we standing on our eyes and, and we holding our principle. And um, we're going to walk, walk away, you know, Lord willing, victorious. And uh, we're going to keep this Comfy Kush thing moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, shout out to Comfy Kush. Y'all make sure y'all go to ComfyKush.com. Check us yeah, out. Hey, um, I know you got that. I know you got that IG. But for the people that um, soaked up game from you tonight, man, I, I definitely appreciate your time. Um, get them some contact information how to find you, man. Y'all make sure y'all uh, follow me. Y'all can follow me on my personal page at Mr. Mint 92 okay. You can follow my company page at Mr. Mint Productions, Inc., and you can uh, check us out on YouTube and Mr. Mr. Productions Inc. with all the latest videos, commercials, all that good stuff. You know, um, we also shoot movies and uh, videos and whatever y'all need. Whatever y'all need, you know, content wise, we deliver. So y'all just let Mr. Mr. Productions know if y'all need whatever. Man, appreciate you, man. Again, shout out to everybody that's tuned in. I ain't really get to talk about no movies today, man, but that behind her eyes on Netflix. Y'all ain't seen that. Y'all gotta check that out. I ain't gonna tell you what it's about. It's kind of weird, but good. It was in the top 10 on Netflix, so I had to watch it. So check that out. Coming to America, I watched it again. I don't know, man. I'm still in love with Paul 1. I don't wanna hate you. Seen it yet? You saw it yet? What would you feel? Uh, I, I, I thought. I thought it would have been a better storyline and somebody could have played his son different. Somebody different. I think so too, man. I could have did with Kevin Hart being his son. You know what I mean? Because the way he act, he got the same. Um, not not synonymous is the word I'm looking for. He got some of the little same little vocal traits. If I'm saying that right, but I was like, man, he he seemed like vocally he sound like Kevin Hart to me. But I don't know how that would work. But yeah, man, that movie. I went back in the past and started watching Jumper. I ain't seen that in a while, so I want to watch that with the kids or whatever. So, man, definitely, man, respect my grind live each and every Tuesday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. When you get down here, bro, we're going to link up. You already know I definitely got to link you with my boy, man, so y'all can talk, 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 talk. You know what I'm saying? Because I ain't going to lie, he ain't no dreamer, and he ain't no talker. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's hard to get him to do this. Right. Man, he used to stream it at a bunch of people. They got a lot of money. Um, he streamed them up out of their money. That money <laughs> and, and he, he, he like football practice, but for like for 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 people that's in the real estate game, like like and he he get them he get them riled up, man. So man, it's 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 awesome to have him here again. Oh uh, man, I'm gonna try to keep both of y'all busy. I got some other outlets that I want to make sure y'all jump on. You know, I, I just be. I'm greedy. I be want people on my show first before I throw y'all on other little platforms. I'm just like that. I'm like that. You know what I'm saying? So, man, again, appreciate you, man. Respect my ground live video mix, man. I'm out of here, bro. Real. Real. Hey, love. Respect my ground. Y'all know what it is. Man, you know, you know what it is. I see people over 